I think some people would think of a population counter as just a number. A number that has little to no meaning and has no impact on the moment to moment aspect of the video game. And while that may be partially true, I would like to remind you and why I feel as though, as with many others, that the population counter provided in Halo games was at the very least useful and even in the slightest bit interesting. I can recall the times where I played Halo 3 online only to see boasting figures of hundreds of thousands of players in any given time frame. And to be honest, seeing this number gave me a feeling that is almost very hard to describe really. It was like a photo of the Halo community was actually alive, and that in itself is a trait that many successful games to this current day try to achieve. Bungie's concept of the virtual couch, bringing people together from all around the world with social interaction in an attempt to build a strong and interactive community. Just knowing that you were a part of something so big, something that everyone else was a part of, was so unique in the experiences created from the social aspect of Halo 3 fostered a journey that I, along with many of my friends, can never forget. And hey, maybe some of you don't see it this way, and like I previously suggested, only see population as a number, but that's okay. Regardless of how you feel about the metric, I would like to argue the idea that the population counter was not merely just a number, but rather a useful gauge of information that's only being hidden because it actually served a specific purpose. And the reason for the removal of population counters, I believe, deals with the negatives that it poses rather than its positives. So allow me to explain. I'd like to start with the positives first. If someone were to walk up to you right now and ask you to explain the positives that a player population counter would pose on a video game, what would you say? I bet the most obvious answer would be the fact that it informs the player if the playlist is populated enough to support ideal matchmaking speeds. And the MCC would benefit greatly from this feature. For instance, I as a player would know not to play in the Rumble Pit playlist because there's only a small pool of players in that game mode, therefore leading to extended matchmaking times. By knowing how many people are in a playlist, you can avoid wasted time searching in dead playlists. Yet there's a problem with this specific answer, and it's the simple fact that Halo 3 in its prime never actually had dead playlists. It could easily support most if not all of its game modes because of how popular it was, so the population counter itself was probably not added as a useful tool to promote faster matchmaking speeds, but rather, I would say, the population counter in Halo 3 was added to specifically promote attention to the game and make players feel like they were actually a part of a massive community. I think it was used in an attempt to replicate a bandwagon effect, the idea that people do something because everyone else is doing it too. Everyone is playing Halo 3, so I need to play it too. Hey, everyone is buying Halo 3, so I need to buy it too. I literally think that the player population tool was actually used as a marketing device in that generation of gaming rather than just an informative tool for gamers. So to those of you who may disagree, I'd like to ask exactly why else do you think gaming companies give out stats that make their products look good? And when I say stats, I mean the statistics that deal with the amount of players online and even sales. For instance, 343i themselves tried to make their Halo game look good with the Halo 5 has the highest number of active players since Halo 3 episode. Microsoft even made an attempt to showcase Halo 4 stats saying the launch of Halo 4 and I quote, propelled lifetime sales for the Halo franchise beyond 3.38 billion, cementing its status as one of the most popular entertainment franchises in the world. They also had the nerve to say that Halo 4 shattered the record for the largest number of active players in the history of the Halo franchise with over 4 million players in the first 5 days. What about the most recent case, the new advertisement that Microsoft put up for their Xbox One, saying that the console is now the best selling console in America, even though it only outsold the PS4 here for 3 months. The Xbox One is the best selling console in America, so I should get one too, right? Do you see how this works? You don't see companies showcasing statistics that give off negative effects, because that in itself is suicide. And I could go on and on showing different examples of franchises and companies using this exact marketing technique known as the bandwagon effect, because this is a part of how business works. But can you see how the bandwagon effect relates to my personal feelings about Halo 3's population, and how I as a gamer felt immersed in a community? that once felt alive. See, that was the goal of the population counter, to show the community just how many people are playing so they know that they are a part of something greater, a living and breathing ecosystem of gamers flourishing with community and social interaction. So now that I have addressed the idea that the population counter was used as a marketing tool, I would then like to suggest that this is also the reason for its removal in the current generation of video games, and I'm not talking just about Halo. As of right now, it is very hard to find any first or third party titles that actually support population counters, and there are a couple of factors I believe that play a role in the removal of this metric in this current generation of gaming. First of all, next-gen systems have not sold nearly as much as last-gen systems.
systems, which in turn decreases the overall pool of players that are actually playing online. So why would I, as a game developer, want my gaming community to know that the population of my game has lower population than previous sequels? The population counter in this current generation of gaming shows the consumer base how less people are actually playing, and that doesn't look good. And because of that, they hide the counter entirely. Then there are games like Halo, games that cannot achieve what their predecessors could achieve because of franchise fatigue, alienation, and lack of content. Halo 4 serves as a perfect example. It featured access to player populations and non-stop players would discuss how low the populations were for the game. It was revealed to the community that Halo 4 was struggling to carry the weight that its predecessors achieved, therefore making it an inferior product. So instead of promoting the game, the population counter actually hurt the game by revealing to the consumer base that less people were actually playing. And here the bandwagon effect takes place yet again. Why would I want to play this game when nobody else is? Remember how I described the feeling of Halo 3 being alive, the community flourishing with an abundance of social interaction? That was nowhere near achieved in Halo 4, which made it seem like a ghost town, an empty, hollow experience, and a vastly inferior product compared to other Halo games. So again, it comes down to this concept. Why as a game dev would I add something to my game that makes it look inferior? I think the less information that the consumer base has about the amount of players online, the smaller the chance of people realizing that fatigue is present. And just like this, because of the lack of a population counter, many players do not know how many people still play Halo 5. By removing the player counter, 343 are able to silence our criticisms about Halo not being as popular as it should be. But there's actually a loophole with the Xbox One's most popular list, allowing us to identify a range for the amount of players that log on daily. Since Battlefield offers player population statistics and is ahead of Halo 5 on the most popular list, we can come to the conclusion that Halo 5's player count will be less than Battlefield 4's. So according to Battlefield Tracker, the Xbox One version of Battlefield 4 had a peak population of about 32,000 players on October 16th. Therefore, we can say that Halo 5's population has to be less than 32,000 players at peak population. Now keep in mind how minute this number is in comparison to the numbers that Halo 3 and even Reach achieved. Halo 3 had nearly 15 times more players than Halo 5 does within the same windows of release, and that by no means is a good thing. It's pathetic for a Halo title. Yet I for one am not disappointed nor surprised by this outcome because of the continuous changes, lack of content, and carelessness that 343 as a company have tainted the Halo franchise with. But can you see exactly why 343 would hide their population numbers from the community? The fact that previous Halo games extremely outpaced Halo 5 in population only makes Halo 5 look bad. This is exactly why I think 343 removed Halo 5's population counter. They don't want community members thinking that their Halo game isn't popular anymore, when really it's a mere shadow of its former self. Now there's actually a solution to the problem of disappearing population counters that I suggest should be implemented into the MCC, Halo 5, and even future installments of the Halo series. Black Ops 3 actually hides the overall population numbers from the consumer base, but instead replaces specific numbers with percent. For instance, a certain percent of the unknown total population plays the Kill Confirmed game type, while another percent are in the Team Deathmatch playlist, and so on and so forth. If implemented into Halo, this would allow the community to know which playlists support the quickest matchmaking speeds, while also keeping the overall number of players hidden to avoid negative perceptions. But of course, instead of copying useful and innovative ideas from Call of Duty, 343 instead try to copy its gameplay and other mechanics. But as I wrap up this commentary, I would further like to stress my idea that the population counter was actually a marketing tool rather than just an indicator for which playlist would feature faster matchmaking speeds. Like I previously suggested, the last generation of games featured player counters to boast player stats unlike the current generation who hides the stats simply because there is nothing to boast anymore. By using this tool, in my opinion, gaming companies used to show off the massive amounts of people that played their games in hopes of other players reacting simply by doing the same. But now they hide it in an attempt to steer you away from negative perceptions of the product that are actually and probably true. As always, I'd like to thank you for watching. Remember to like, share, comment your thoughts, concerns on the video, and lastly, subscribe to Webisgrade for more content about the future of Halo and gaming in general. Peace.